Welcome to the 2024 Inside Tulsa Athletics. I'm Rick Corey, your new host. I'll give a shout out to the former host of this show in a few minutes. In the meantime, I want to tell you what we're going to cover as we begin the show again. We're going to talk certainly football. It's that season right about now, but that's not all. There's also volleyball going on, cross country going on, and all the kids and athletes need to be taken care of. We're going to talk about sports medicine as well. All this year on a new edition, 2024 Inside Tulsa Athletics. Back with everybody next. Welcome to Inside Tulsa Athletics. I am Rick Corey, and I would tell you that I am the guy taking the place of the man who did this for so many years, but there's no replacing Gil Cloud. Instead, I'm just the next guy on the line as Gil moves along, the longtime Tulsa Athletic Director, and I'll be joined in just a moment by a longtime Tulsa head coach and a guy who knows the facility very well. But I want to say thank you to Gil first for setting not only the planks for what is this show, but also for Tulsa Athletics over the last several years. Having said that, it's football season. It's time for us to talk about football. We're going to begin with a guy who's seen an awful lot of it, Antoine Jimerson, head football coach at East Central High School. How are the Cardinals? Man, great to be on with you. Uh, exciting time of year, like you just said. Uh, like I said, shout out to Gil, first yes. of all. Gil, we miss you. We love you and, uh, you know, hope to see you soon. But uh, definitely exciting time for us. Uh, we we got off to a good start. It's been a, been a great summer, and uh, I don't know what those coaches do that show up in August. You know, thank <laughs> thank God that the district got me back to town late in no late in late yep. in January. Yep. You know, so so I've had a chance to get adjusted, and the kids have got adjusted, and uh, we're just excited at where we are. You know, and, and we're such a young team that we're able to see the progress from day to day. You know, so very exciting. All right, as I said, Antoine's been around a long time, and you just mentioned just coming back. Give people some of the backstory about coming back. Well, at, after leaving Booker T. Washington, went to went to Texas for 14 years, spent five years in the Dallas area, and then uh, year year nine, you know, I spent nine years at Jefferson High School in Jefferson, Texas, which is where, where I'm from, you know. But uh, I, you know, a, after year nine, my, you know, I would talk to my superintendent every year. He's like. You know, how long are you going to stay? Are you going to be here? I was like, I don't know. And then I started missing home. You know, I tell everybody when you're when you're an 18 year old kid and you go to college and uh, if you do it right, you really grow up in college. Yes. You know, so so I've, I've, I've always felt like Tulsa's been home. You know, I spent a lot of time here. All of my kids are here. And uh, when I talked to my wife about moving, we, were, we, we had decided we we're going to go to Dallas or Florida. And my wife said, if we're going to move, we need to go back to Tulsa. And I said, uh, we, me and her having this conversation, I said, I don't have a job in Tulsa. She said, you'll get one. <laughs> you know, so she kind of spoken in, into uh, existence. So so I definitely thank the people at East Central, uh, our athletic director, Ricky Bruner, and our principal, Miss Wilson. You know, they, they, they brought me on campus and uh, they didn't let me leave without offering me a job. <laughs> so, so, so it's home for me. I'm excited about it. And East Central is a place I want to be. Well, and you, you were just talking about off camera. You guys have some nice facilities. What you're trying to do now is get just kind of that work and that development progress and that process going. How's that going? Yeah, but first of all, the facilities there have been it's great. You know, you know, we brag on our weight room when other schools, especially other TPS schools, come by. We always give them a tour. Like they're like, man, this thing is nice. <laughs> you know, so TPS did a great job with the weight room there on campus and and now just getting the numbers back up and uh, just talking to the people there on campus at the end of the year, East Central finished with less than 30 players. And now we're up to 55 players. So so we're growing. Our ultimate goal is to to get above 100, mm-hmm. nine through 12. And we feel like, that, like that'll come. And uh, you know, when you hear people around the city about, you know, kids moving here or there, it's like, well, we, we're in a different situation because we didn't lose any kids. 
you know, so the kids there, they, they really want to be there. So, so that's very exciting. Yes. So you can coach them hard, you can love <laughs> on them, you can do all those things because they really want to be there. And that's something that we're very proud of. Considering what you've seen from your football team from the time you got here until now, you see development and then mm -hmm. you see what happens when the lights come on, you see the all city, that kind of thing. What do you, what are your expectations? Well, our, our, our goal is just continue to get better. And like I say, when you, when you have such a young team, you know, you can see it from day to day, just how they get in their stance, how they explode off the ball. Yeah. And, and our goal is to continue to get better and, and have an opportunity to go to the playoffs. And, uh, you know, we, we, we started off last week and, uh, a great game early on but when you so young and your emotions you know so that, that this week our, our focus as coaches is it's kind of level out those emotions mm -hmm. you know so our kids can play for four quarters sure yeah and that's one of the harder things to do you mentioned before that adrenaline it really gets you and you have to coach them high enough but not too high after a long long time coaching it's still not easy is it it's still not easy you have to remind yourself not to yeah, as a coach you know cuz you're excited when kids making it making a play sure. but but to level that out and 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 to go in at halftime to kind of regroup okay we got to get it back up and, and be able to sustain it mm -hmm. but our kids you know they played hard for four quarters you know and that's something we're very proud of and and even just talking to our athletic director he he said I, I, the crowd we had game 1 was better than the crowd they've had the last three years. And we expect that to continue to get better. Now that is an exciting part of this whole job. What is it right now you'd really like most to see your team do? Is it just picking up that development process or is it kind of, you said coach them hard, getting used to that? Yeah, I think just developing a total program from 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 middle school on up. Sure. You know, and, and, and our goal as coaches has to be to uh, – Develop our kids where they can play on Friday night. Because I always feel like when, when you're playing high school football, that, that's an exciting time. You know, because as you know, most of them are not going to play college football. Yeah. So, so everybody got to be on the same page to get them to Friday night and let them enjoy the atmosphere of a Friday night. Antron, welcome back. It hey, is so fantastic you. to see you. Thank you. And thank I'm sure you. he will not be a stranger. That is Antron Jimerson. And we'll be right back here on Inside Tulsa Athletics. Hey Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is facing off against a tough competitor, plastic. Don't trust those numbers on the bottom. You have to stick to what you know. Only bottles and jugs found in the kitchen, bath, or laundry. They're quick to pick up and empty those bottles before sinking that shot. Always empty your bottles before recycling. Score big by recycling your plastic bottles and jugs. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Which one of these items can be recycled in the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart? Air filter, cardboard box, toy car. The correct answer is cardboard box. Paper and cardboard are perfect for the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart. But air filters and toys should be thrown away in the gray trash cart. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Back with you again on Inside Tulsa Athletics. I'm Rick Corey, and we are now pleased to be joined by a young lady who's having a birthday today. I'm going to lead with that because she <laughs> just told me that. And we are talking to the young lady who runs the program at Booker T in volleyball, Taylor Nero. C congratulations and happy birthday. Yes, thank you. What, 18? I'll take it. <laughs> Let's try 17. <laughs> Well, it is actually happy birthday. Yes, that is very nice you. of you to come out on this day. And, you know, I had to ask, when I saw I was going to get a chance to talk to a volleyball coach, I got very excited for a lot of reasons. Number one, tell me what kind of bump you guys get off Olympic attention. Not a, well, well, as far as like Booker T? Yeah, I mean, excitement. Okay. Oh, of course. So I absolutely love Olympic like the Olympics and volleyball. I don't know if the girls quite watch it just because they're a little young <laughs> and I don't know. But growing up, I was really excited to always watch Olympics and volleyball. They're super tall. I'm five nine, so, and I was a middle, so I was considered short, but um, just watching those tall girls and, and even men's volleyball Olympics, that's really exciting too. I mean, watching those men jump out of the gym, literally, yes. is super exciting. So I love when that time comes around. Again, I don't know about the girls, but I do. <laughs> I know it does traditionally kind of bump up programs and interest yeah. in certain sports. You know, every yeah. time it's a Winter Olympics, somebody yeah. wants to go curling, which I'm right. <laughs> I don't. I don't out. necessarily know if that 
you know, volleyball is one of those things you start when you're really young, yes. you know? So, so a lot of like my athletes or even myself started at ages nine, 10, 11. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if the Olympics makes you want to go if you're that young, but I do know once you get a little older, you know, you broaden like, hey, maybe I could be in the Olympics one day or maybe I could go play pro. And so I think that kind of persuades those thoughts, but I don't know if it like helps, it, like, you know, promotes them like start playing volleyball. Yeah, well, yeah. It, well we would hope it would be a, an actual and good participation thing for yeah. you guys. Let's talk about yeah. that because we've heard a lot about participation mm -hmm. from some of our guests. What are the numbers like at Booker T? Um, so we actually, unfortunately, have gone down in participation this year. Um, I used to have about 60 uh, athletes in part of the program. This is my third year at Booker T, and so we're sitting at 45. So um, not losing them to the school, they're still at the school, but they just didn't try out again. And so whatever reason, um, Booker T is pretty competitive in yes. academics. And so that plays a huge part. Usually when some of my athletes come back and they're like, hey, I'm just not gonna play this year. It's usually due to like an IB program or just some rigorous um, academic you know, pull to sure. what's causing them to not wanna you know, double in something. When you look at this group, this group you have this year, what do you feel about this group? I am excited. I walk into the gym every day and I'm excited to be there. Um, the girls get along. Um, at this point, when I got there, they were all like freshmen and sophomores. Mm -hmm. And so um, to just have them be juniors and seniors now, we've just grown in relationship and even outside of volleyball. I mean, they're just really, really good kids. And so I, I have a great time with them. How much emphasis do you put on that? I and mean, something you said there that I hear from a lot of coaches, I mean, players do have to like each other mm -hmm. or at least get along and respect yeah. each other. How much emphasis do you put on that team building, doing those kinds of things yeah. to keep them that way? So that's something that is really huge for me. Volleyball doesn't work if you can't communicate. And so if you have a bunch of girls who don't like each other or they just have some type of dysfunction off of the court, and we always talk about, you know, leave it at the door and all of that, it's really hard for teenage girls to do that. And so when you have, um, a surplus amount of girls in one setting, um, that is a huge goal for me, is to make sure that they are all getting along. Whether they're friends or not outside of the court, let's get along here on the court, you know, <laughs> just for two hours today. And so we'd actually do a really good job of that. And I'm pretty blessed to say that like all of my girls are good friends outside of the court and outside of volleyball, they hang out and everything. So I'm lucky. <laughs> that does help an awful yes. lot. But athletically too, you talk about a certain kind of an athlete yeah. for each sport. If someone is trying to get into volleyball or trying to get somebody else into volleyball, what would you say the big core skills would be? Um, so volleyball is very fundamental. And so no matter like how athletic you are, you can still be successful in volleyball as long as you are um, pretty sound when it comes to fundamentals and things like that. So my biggest thing would just be um, coachability. And I know that has nothing to do with like, you know, how good you are skill wise, but as long as I can teach you something, then you're good to go, you know? And so I would say like, you know, passing, hitting, serving, those things like that are all something I can teach. So as long as you have a good mentality towards it, you'll be successful. Anything a ladies that you'd like to mention you know, that are coming along very well? Uh, yeah, so we actually um, have a junior. She's a junior now. When I got there, she was a freshman, but um, her name is Ari Brown. Well, she goes by Ari. Her name is Ariana Brown, and she um, is the one of the top outsides in Oklahoma, and so um, she definitely carries a lot of our um, just momentum and She's one of those who I look to and the team looks to, you know, and so she is definitely a pivotal part of our program. Um, she just signed to UNLV, so that'll be a big deal for her in the next coming years. And we have a libero who's a senior and a setter who's a senior, and I'm so sad to say that this year. <laughs> <laughs> but um, those girls, definitely all three of them are pillars to our program. Well, Taylin, thank you very much for coming in, especially of on your course. birthday. Yes. I hope you get something really nice from your birthday. I hope so, too. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see you again, I'm sure, this year. Yeah, okay. Back with more in a moment on Inside Tulsa Athletics. Hey Tulsa, we have a crushing recycle play of the day for you. Team Johnson versus paper and cardboard. They're starting off slow today, probably trying to figure out what to do with those styrofoam plates since they're not recyclable. There's the big play we were waiting for. Boom, completely empty cardboard boxes dunked in the cart. 
Score big by recycling your cardboard and paper. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Being an athlete at Nathan Hills means that you have to be consistent, outgoing, and be dedicated because, because students at, at Nathan Hill look up to, to the football team. Being an athlete at Nathan Hill has taught me to be confident and disciplined and always to be open-minded and always ready to work with people no matter how difficult it is. We have more right now from Inside Tulsa Athletics. Welcome back in. I'm Rick Corey, and I'm joined by the new, well, I say new, head football coach out of Booker T, and his name is Dan Vinson. Not new anymore because you've actually played a game, but still, it is a new experience for you, so to speak. How's it going? It's good. It's good to be here. It's good to be uh, to see your face. I mean, it brings a smile to my face, so it helps me to relax. But it's, it's really going well because, you know, I got some great kids. I'm back at, I'm back home. You know, so I'm excited. You know, it's just, it's new. It's new. I love the challenge. And that challenge, where does it start? Well, it starts with just ground zero. You know, you have to start with trying to implement your culture and, and your beliefs and all that. So for me, um, I had to start with discipline to make sure people understood my philosophy. And then it went to, uh, Respect. You know, I wanted to make to make I wanted to make sure that I respected the kids and the kids respected me. And then after that, it, it, it concluded with relationships. You know, you, you got to have good relationships. People got to understand that you care about them, uh, you know, and that, that was huge for me. So it's just establishing some, some small ground rules and starting to treat the kids pretty much uh, like you would at the next level. Sure. And there's a time when you do and you come in to establish, as you said, some discipline and a, a culture and a program. Not everybody's going to like that, are they? Not everybody does, you know, <laughs> and you're still going to have a little resistance because some people are, are still stuck in the way they used to do it or the way they want to do it. And so, you know, you might have to trim a little fat. You know, you don't want to trim a little fat because you always want every kid to be successful. But sometimes, you know, I don't want to continue to keep beating my head against the wall because it sends, it sends the wrong message to the to the uh, to the sheet to the rest sure. of the other players. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Now you've gotten into game one, and you've kind of seen how your football teams developed. How are you feeling? And what do you expect? Well, that was the biggest thing because again, early, you know, we did we had a nice summer, and we uh, well, if I go further back, we had a nice spring, mm -hmm. and spring ball was was exciting. We had a chance to go against one another, went to a Claremore camp, and we did well. And then we we uh, this summer we had a seven on seven where we actually won a seven on seven. And then we went to all city and we was able to pull out the all city victory. But at the same time, I was wondering when, you know, how we would do when we stacked up against, you know, uh, competition that, that would may have been a little better. So when you're going against Muskogee to defend the state champions and they got a few players on their team that that's pretty outstanding. I wanted to know, and I was curious to see how my kids will respond. You know, because I knew Muskogee would come out and punch us in the mouth, and I wanted to know if we would actually punch back. And our kids competed. They fought hard, and they fought to the very end, and I was pleased with that. That's a lot to build on. You know, and all, coaches will tell you, players will tell you, you can improve the most between game one and game two. That's the case. What do you want to see improve the most? Well, what I want to do is I want us to get healthy. That's the biggest thing. We have to stay healthy. And the biggest thing is for, for my kids to settle down. I, I told the kids yesterday, we have to kick their door down. You know, we, I have some talented kids, but when you are, when, when you have been in a two and eight situation of last year and they're, and they're young. And so they were unsure of what they're capable of doing. And there's no magic dust or anything that I can do. It's, you know, the coaches don't play the game. It's a matter, those kids have to play the game. And so when we kick the door down, I feel like those, the, the wins, the success and the culture, the tradition, it starts to, it, it grows with it. Well, one of the things I saw you do during the summer was really fun because I saw you at a TU a couple of times. You had players. You were running around excited like you were a kid again. <laughs> Did this job instill some of that in you again? It brought back a lot of different, uh, you know, a lot of different energy in my, in my body. I mean, I knew I wanted to get back and coach. You know, in the college profession, you know, after two or three years, you're probably getting up, relocating your family. For me yeah. in the player development role, you know, I was kind of 
helping, making a difference in a lot of kids' lives, but I wasn't coaching. That was my true passion. So coming back to a place, I had to pick a place that I would be very happy with, that I felt like I could make a difference, and why not go back to my alma mater? And Booger T is one, to me, is one of the top schools in the state. And so I was excited. I'm still excited. I'm fired up about it. I mean, my, my days are long. But at the same time, I mean, I enjoy it. This is what I asked for. So I won't complain about it. It's just you have to pull up your sleeves and you just got to dig in. And, and I know it's going to get better. You know, I, I, I know I can see the progress. And so I'm, I'm really excited. I just want to make sure I keep that same energy and passion every day. Any of your kids you want to mention as uh, after just a game one and who you expect some things from this year? Well, I have an outstanding I have an outstanding uh, junior sophomore class. But I mean, I got a senior to me, Darion Overstreet. He's one of the best corners in, in, the, in the state. And I say this all the time, even if he does have a flaw. He can recover so fast to where I've never seen him get beat already. And, and I've, I've been there in the summer. I've been there in the spring. And I've been in fall camp. I mean, he's a talented kid. We lost his brother, you know, Dalen, to an ACL tear. And so um, I have a defensive lineman who's a sophomore, Joe Graves. You know, he has an offer from University of Oklahoma, and he's a talented young man. He's a big guy. When I got there, he was 275. Now he's 300 pounds. And then we were fortunate enough to get Dwayne Jones, he's a, who's another sophomore. So those two in the middle makes it difficult to uh, double team. And I, and I mean, I, I just love our front, defensive front. My mentality was to put my best players on defense and then put my second best on offense and let's see if we can create some havoc. And we were fortunate enough in all city not to give up any points, so that made it pretty easy. So, um, but I'm, I'm very pleased with a lot, of, a lot of guys that we have. I mean, I have some tremendous athletes. I have, uh, um, let me see, um, Keenan Farley at receiver. He's a two-way player. He plays defensive back. He plays safety. I mean, he's very talented. Um, I have uh, 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 McClellan who didn't get many snaps last year because of uh, uh, the receiving core. But right now he's he's making plays. He's a tremendous receiver. Uh, I, have, and I, um, I have a running back, Michael, who's they call him Sweet Feet. And he I mean, he may not be very big, but he's he's hard to tackle. And so, I mean, there's, there's just so many guys that I can name because we're super talented. It's just a matter of just understanding that the set the success will come when they are ready for it to make to make to make it happen no there a lot of guys have made it happen there in the past including this one right here dan bitson thank you very much for joining sure, us it. i'm sure we'll see him again back Thanks with more in a moment me. here on inside tulsa athletics Hey Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is looking to defend their title against aluminum and steel cans. Bob, most people think of the kitchen for this opponent, but aluminum and steel cans like empty shaving cream cans also play extremely well in bathrooms all over Tulsa. That was nothing but bin, Bob. Wow, right into the bin. Team Johnson has buttoned up another win. Score big by recycling your aluminum and steel cans. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Being an athlete at Booker T. Washington has taught me to carry myself with class as an athlete, student, and friend, and um, to have responsibility on and off the field, um, and that it's the littlest things that will make all the difference in the long run. Being an athlete at Memorial High School has taught me to be a better person, because when you play sports, attitude is the main thing you have to deal with, not just your own, but other people's. It also teaches you to be the bigger person. There's even more here on Inside Tulsa Athletics. I'm Rick Corey. Welcome back in. And now we are pleased to be joined by the cross-country coach, one of the cross-country coaches from Edison High School. We are talking to Barbara Pinkerton. You're coaching boys. You have a partner coaching girls. But you guys really coach together, right? Yes. We have a good team um, of coaches. Um, we've got an assistant, two assistant coaches that also help out. Um, but because the girls and boys, many are 
about the same paces sometimes. It helps to push the girls, push the boys, coaching them together. You know, I was going to ask about that because when we're talking about running, sure, there are some differences. There are always going to be some mm -hmm. differences in athletes, but really the training is pretty much the same, isn't it? Yes, the training is pretty much the same. It's just different goals for maybe their speed sessions. So one has a different goal for the 400 than another one. And sometimes we break them up. And so we'll do um, based on the last race, you know, kind of group them by their finish times. And so it mixes in the girls and boys, which motivates the girls because sure. they want to beat the boys and the boys want to beat the girls. <laughs> well, that, that does make sense. I mean, use anything you can as a coach yes. to your advantage. Yes. Right? You know, I, I'd ask one of the volleyball coaches in earlier if they got a bump from Olympics and, and she said, not really. Do you guys get any extra interest after an Olympic Games? I think one, it excites the current team because during summer practices and stuff, we were talking about it. Sure. And then I think with the middle school program, luckily my other head coach, um, Hamer, coaches middle school. And so she has seen an increase of, I think she has around 40 or 50 kids wow. in middle school. So I think it kind of inspires the young to like, well, maybe I can try this out, which then helps high school because all that feeds into the high school program. Where are you right about now with the program? I mean, and when I ask that, that can mean a lot of different things. But when you're, when you're looking at a cross country team, you can look at mm -hmm. someone and think, okay, they had a good season last year, but everything changes, bodies change, physically right. things change. Where are you guys yeah. standing right now? We're doing really well. We've got some phenomenal juniors and seniors this year. Um, we also last year got a lot of great freshmen and freshman year. It's kind of just feeling it out. Sure. All of a sudden they're with the high school kids. Um, and just to see even after two races, the sophomores now just how much they've improved with just that extra year of training with high school. Um, you know, getting on varsity, beating some of the upperclassmen. Um, so we've really got a good mature team. We brought in a few freshmen um, that again are just kind of getting their feelers out. Um, but the sophomores, juniors, and seniors, we've got some great ones. How are you guys adjusting for the heat? Because we talk about football having to or softball or whatever, right. but you guys have to as well. Yes, during the summer, we start out pretty early. And then as we get to August, we'll either try to incorporate some afternoon practices mm -hmm. if the heat index isn't too high, or it's just, I'd always encourage them to go out in the afternoon and just walk around to get used to that heat. But we do have to modify it. We can't do quite as long as practices or just modify the practice to give them more breaks. Is there a favorite, you know, Tulsa is an area that's got a lot of different trails, things like that. When mm -hmm. people hear cross country, I don't think they have a complete understanding of where you guys run and where you compete. Do you like the area when it comes to the, the courses and things you're able to use? Yes. Um, I mean, our favorite course, and I think the kids' favorite course is Hall and Hall because it's a true cross country. You get to run in the woods. This summer, we did a lot more practicing at Turkey Mountain, huh. which gave them a lot more hills working with trying to run in dirt and grass. Um, and so most of the courses are, you know, grass and dirt, um, but probably out of eight races, probably three or four like true, you know, hilly dirt rocks and grass courses. People are gonna wanna know, do you have to have different shoes, different equipment for that, something like that? Um, just running shoes, that's the thing is it's pretty simple. They don't even have to do, you know, trail shoes or anything. You can use road running shoes for the cross country. Now, a lot of the junior seniors will wear spikes just because yes. it helps to um, grab the ground better. But I always tell the kids, especially their first year, just wear your road shoes and, you know, let's see how the year goes. When you get someone coming into the program, what's the first thing you try to indoctrinate them with? What do you tell them first about you and about your program? Well, one thing is um, all of the coaches are runners. And so that's one thing that's good and bad for them <laughs> because we've heard all the excuses, um, but also just pride in hard work. Um, we're not just a running club. We are here to win and to do well. And it's a lot of training, um, but we also make it fun. And I think that's one of the things the kids keep coming back for is we do have fun. Um, when we run. So you've heard those excuses may have made of one or two when you were younger, right? Yes, yes. We'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Barbara Pinkerton, uh, head boys cross country coach at Edison. Thank you very much. Thank for you. Here. Back with more in a moment here on Inside Tulsa Athletics. Hey Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is facing off against one tough competitor, Glass. 
That's right. Only glass bottles and jars are recyclable. Don't even think about sinking a drinking glass or mirror. Always good to empty your glass bottles and jars before recycling. These two get it, emptying both bottles from far out, and they remove the lids. Score big by recycling your glass bottles and jars. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Being an athlete at Edison High School has taught me to work as a team rather than as an individual. Whenever you're on a team, you have a special bond with each other. You know you can rely on them in a time of need, whether on or off the court. Whether it be a shoulder to cry on or advice on how you can improve, you know your team will always be there for you. Which one of these items can be recycled in the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart? Battery, steel can, thermos. The correct answer is steel can. Aluminum and steel cans are great for the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart. To dispose of e-waste like batteries, contact the city of Tulsa. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Welcome back here on Inside Tulsa Athletics. I'm Rick Corey, and we are happy to be joined now by a guy who's Hallways I'm very familiar with. He's from Nathan Hale High School. He's Alan Medlock, and he is the athletic director. Welcome aboard, Ranger to Ranger. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I, I actually, I, you know, I tell people I graduated from there. I was really more asked to leave. But anyway, <laughs> that happened back in 1977. I have not been in the building a lot, but when I drive by over there, I see a lot of improvements at Nathan Hale. Yeah, a lot of progress right now. We, uh, we have a new facing to the building. Um, we Last year, we had all kinds of construction coming in and out. And then next year, we will open up our new uh, outdoor facility yeah. where we're going to have a uh, half football slash soccer field and a half or in a basketball practice gym and all the athletic facilities and, and offices will be out there. So that'll be 2025. So a lot of things changing there on the uh, corner of 21st Street. It's, uh, it's an exciting time. And something else changed too, and that was a game one win. Congratulations yes. on Thank that you. win over Daniel Webster. Yeah, 44 game losing streak is over. Came in, got the win, and uh, now it's uh, onward and upward from here. There's a lot of positive energy going around right now. Have some uh, young assistants on that staff that are really, really bringing the energy. And that's all we've asked is uh, there's been a lot of change from principal down, and this is my first year as AD. I've had the baseball job the last four years, right. and I'm going to do both this year. But, you know, what we wanted to do is just uh, up the participation numbers and, mm -hmm. and start making these uh, game nights fun again. You know, we uh, haven't had a band the last couple of years and we had a full band playing extremely well the other night at the uh, the uh, at the game and and the cheerleaders in new uniforms and all kinds of stuff. So we're just trying to instill some some positivity and get things moving. And you could you know, do from the construction down. We we feel like we're on the right track. Well, it'd be really great to get back to that old Hale Marching 100. That's what, that's what they called yeah. them back in the old days. <laughs> yep. When you take an athletic director's job at a place like this, and they've had some rough times, there's no question about it. Where do you start? Where do you start building? Well, it's, for me, it was participation. And participation starts with making these events. I mean, football is easy. Mm -hmm. and especially in Oklahoma, because uh, Oklahoma football, that's the place to be on Friday nights or Thursday nights whenever we play. And we wanted to sell those nights as an event. And the last couple of years, football numbers had just dwindled from the beginning of the season to the end. We wanted there to be buy-in complete. And we started with the football numbers, because I've said, even as a baseball coach, you have to get into that football program. You have to get in. That helps your numbers. That helps your athletics. They do your weight training a lot of a lot of on, for just about every sure. athletic program. So we wanted to focus on game nights then and say, hey, this is fun. You know, get those, get the pads on, get the uh, get the feel of the band, get the feel of the crowd. Because like you said, the alumni wants to fill those stands because yeah. that's what they want to do on those Friday nights. You get that blood pumping and you can run it off to any other sport. And that's where I, what I think that uh, I think that we've really started. There's a, uh, one of the critical issues in, in Oklahoma sports in general is just participation sure. numbers yeah. and apathy towards sports. And, yeah. and especially on, on our side was just the apathy of, of lack of experience. So and we're just trying to change that. So we wanted bare bones. I came in and I said, we want the numbers to go up in all these sports. The district's been a huge help. Administration has been a huge help. And uh, we're up to close to 60 approved players now and they finished with like 17 last year. So I think that that was where we wanted to start. We just wanted to get bodies out there to show that, hey, the, 
the, we'll put the investment into you and that means you come to school and, and, and do the student part and we'll work on the athlete part. So we just wanted to get as many numbers and guys and, and, and guys and gals playing sure. and, and it's uh, that's where we wanted to, to begin, kick things off. Now I've heard guys and ladies too going to recruit oh. places like uh, yeah. shopping malls and things like that, but classroom to classroom. And when, you, and when you say participation, you've also talked about making an event. You've got to make it fun for them because sports is more than a sport, it's entertainment too. Sure. Where did you start? Did you go into recruiting classrooms? Did Without a doubt. Yeah, yeah the, it's, uh, I knew that, uh, that we would go out on the football field for practice. And then what, what I love to do is on the schedule pickup days, we have every sport have a uh, have uh, their coaches out there with signs, banners, gear to show that hey, this is inclusive. You know, come play. This be a part of something. Be yeah. a part of something growing. I mean, this is the exciting part about this one. It, it, this year's schedule pickup was fun because we knew there was going to be football energy. Well, the football energy is going to pick up a little bit more because we have the first flag football league. So the girls get to play now. Right. So there's been there's been a lot of buy in on in the fall sports side just for that and. Uh, in in it's really helped kids, you know, and that's that's the ultimate goal. You know, certainly you're not done with football. It's only game number one, but you've got to already be transitioning and thinking of all the other sports, things that are going on now, things you're going to do in the future. That's got to take up most of your day. Sure, sure. That's uh, and it, it was one of the initiatives was participation in everything, and and uh, you know, Mick and Crystal had had made the point we need to get these numbers up. And we've done it. I mean, we've had uh, football's in, in a really good spot. We have a lot, uh, softball's in great spot, great spot. Volleyball numbers are high cross country, new coaches, and we're still in a good spot there. We're gonna run into the to, uh, flag football, which the interest there is gonna be high just because it's yes, new. Right. And then we have a new basketball coach and he's already ran two tryouts, boys and girls. And, you know, just focus on fall, move into winter, and then we'll roll into spring. I think that, uh, I think that we're going to keep that momentum of getting kids in. I, I think that we're in a good spot. Well, it's not it's not always the easiest thing to do, but it sure is fulfilling, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, that's the win. That's I have three. Uh, I have I, three of my kids have graduated from 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 TPS, and it meant something to me to take this to take this role, and that they trusted me to do it. And you know, it means a lot just to get the, get them out there to see the smile on the kids' faces and get them in a classroom. Locked in. Hail to the Rangers. Absolutely. By the way, I know a guy who's about a 2X that look good on. Absolutely. Thanks for coming, <laughs> Alan. Make it happen. Alan Medlock from Nathan Hale. Back with more in a moment here on Inside Tulsa Athletics. Hey, Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is looking to defend their title against aluminum and steel cans. Bob, most people think of the kitchen for this opponent, but aluminum and steel cans, like empty shaving cream cans, also play extremely well in bathrooms all over Tulsa. That was nothing but bin, Bob. Wow, right into the bin. Team Johnson has buttoned up another win. Score big by recycling your aluminum and steel cans. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. I feel like athletics is so important at Tulsa Central because it's an outlet for some of our kids there. They get a, a better opportunity to basically give back to our community. At McLean, the sports is what mainly drives a bunch of the students to come to school every single day and work hard because they want to be able to come from the classroom to the field or the court and show at what they're good at. Which one of these items can be recycled in the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart? Plastic bottle, cooler, laundry basket. The correct answer is plastic bottle. Plastic bottles and jugs are perfect for the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart. But coolers and laundry baskets should be thrown away in the gray trash cart. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Welcome back. It's more Tulsa Athletics, Inside Tulsa Athletics. I'm Rick Corey, and I'm happy to be joined now by the Director of Sports Medicine. His name is Steve Freebus, and boy, I'm glad you're here because the beginning of the year is so difficult for anyone because of the heat. And every year you hear it probably isn't any different, but how are you guys handling things this year? Yeah, the, it is. It challenges not just uh, football. Everybody thinks football, but softball, cross yes. country, anybody that's outside. And so it, it's monitoring those conditions and then trying to be safe about it, both in, in what we do at practice, whether we modify, uh, whether they're just in helmets and, or just shoulder pads removed during conditioning or warm-ups. 
uh, things like that, uh, clothing, uh, the intensity of it drills, and timing. Sometimes we've had to push practices later in the evening when the sun gets a little lower. We use the, the Kestrel devices, which measures the wet bulb globe temperature. And so it's more than just the heat index. It includes uh, humidity, the air temperature, solar radiation from the sun, and wind. Because some of those days, actually the wind helped make it feel a little bit better, but days when it's still, it's hot. Yeah, no doubt about that. And, you know, really, the, the the way to handle that hasn't really changed much through the year. Hydrate a lot, make sure you're not in the sun as much. Are there any new developments and things you guys use? I know, like, protein packs and different kinds of hydration have come along. Right. Uh, you know, and, and that hydration doesn't start on practice day. It's yes. something that really, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's all week long. And so it's amazing how many kids, they think that they can show up at practice and then start drinking when they get thirsty, and they're way behind the eight ball. And so it's something that I encourage the kids. That it's got to be a routine. It's every day. And, and when they're not in school because it's still summer, they're not in that routine. During the school day, I can say, drink that one bottle of water every class period. And, uh, and, and that way, by the time they get to practice, they're at least fairly well hydrated. But when they're sitting around playing video games, they're not thinking about drinking water. Right, exactly, yeah. Now, one of the things that we've seen really advance in sports medicine specifically are the things athletes wear or don't wear. You know, sometimes you'll be watching TV and you'll see a college player with his, his knee pads up over his knees. And, you know, as a, as a guy who's my age, I was like, ah, how do, you, how do you do that? What are some of the better things that have come along to help? I know the knee braces have gotten better, you know, taping of ankles, all that has evolved. Right. I, I mean, we do probably a lot more using braces, both ankle braces, knee braces, than we do actually the, the good old-fashioned white tape. Mm -hmm. uh, most studies have shown that after about 20, 30 minutes, that white tape, is it's, it's stretched. It's, it's not as stiff as it was when you first put it on. It feels really good. Where an ankle brace, you can, if it gets a little loose, you can tighten it back up at halftime. Uh, knee braces have just come miles yes. ahead, and so that really helps save. Because uh, so many injuries, it's not from that they did something weird. It's that somebody landed on them. It's just in a big pile, and they were relaxed when somebody hit their knee, and so there's no defense against it. Um, you know, shoulder pads have gotten lighter, but they've also gotten better protection. Uh, the way they strap up, it's most of them is, is rigid straps versus the old elastic that just gets wear, worn out and, yeah, sure. and, and stretched. Yeah, and of course helmets have evolved ridiculously. Yeah, helmets have come a long way. Helmets have even, uh, some brands have uh, sensors inside that can mm -hmm. tell the athletic trainer uh, where they got hit, which direction, the velocity, and if it's above a certain threshold, we can go. Doesn't mean they have a concussion, but just says they took a big hit. Let's go and check them out. Just make sure that they're okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the things we hear about with football a lot. But you already mentioned there are a lot of other sports going on. People may not always think it. Volleyball players get hurt. Softball players get hurt. Cross country people they, they get hurt as well. What are some of the more common things you run into? Right, uh, and, and footwear. This really goes through every sport. Most people don't realize that footwear is only designed for one season, not a year and they think well yeah these are the same cleats I've been in since last year most of them they're only designed for a year so when you have a lot of foot problems footwear is one of the first thing I check foot knee ankle hip and you know how old are those shoes and so um, and, and, and yeah, heat, people think that, that softball, you're standing around a lot, but the gals, the, the girl who's behind the plate in full catcher's gear, helmet, all covered up, crouched down on the dirt where the sun's radiating her, she's having a much different experience than the girl out in center field where the wind's kind of blowing, it's yeah. under green grass where it's cooler. Big difference. At this time of year, what are you mostly concerned about outside the heat other than that? I mean, we are kind of getting started. Football's been going for a while, most sports have. But at the beginning of any sport, there's that jump initially that bodies aren't quite yet used to. Right. It's hard to simulate. You can work out all summer, but it's hard to simulate game intensity. And when you get to that first game, the adrenaline's a little bit more. You're more intense. The energy demands. And, yeah, people who haven't prepped all week long, they start cramping, yeah. they start, um, you know, the little aches, aches and pains, they get hit a little harder than their buddy hit them in practice because that opponent wants to go a little bit harder. So those are the things we look at is the, the nicks and, and bumps and bruises and, and the cramping is probably the big one. And once it starts, I mean, it's a season long thing you got to keep up with. Yeah, people think that there's some magic elixir, whether it's pickle juice <laughs> or mustard packets, it, there's no replacement for 
the, the lifestyle of eating properly, because uh, you know you can't get that into your system within about 15 minutes. It right. doesn't work that way. Yeah, that whole eating thing. I have not got that one down yet. <laughs> I got to promise you that. Well, I know you'll be back, and I appreciate you being here. There's so much more that we could get into for such a long time. Steve Freebus, the director of sports medicine here on Inside Tulsa Athletics, will be back with more coming up. Hey, Tulsa, we have a crushing recycle play of the day for you. Team Johnson versus paper and cardboard. They're starting off slow today, probably trying to figure out what to do with those styrofoam plates since they're not recyclable. There's the big play we were waiting for. Boom! Completely empty cardboard boxes dunked in the cart. Score big by recycling your cardboard and paper. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. I love Will Rogers Athletics because it helped me physically, spiritually, and emotionally through all the journeys I've been through at that school. Um, all of the support staff helped me a lot, and it's just an amazing school. Athletics at Will Rogers changed my life because it became a second family with the support of my coaches and teammates. It's helped me gain confidence, work as a team, and will help me in college and in life. Which one of these items can be recycled in the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart? Glass bottle, string lights, ceramic mug. The correct answer is glass bottle. Glass bottles and jars are perfect for the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart, but string lights and ceramic mugs should be donated or thrown away in the gray trash cart. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. I'm Rick Corey, and now everybody sit up straight and look forward because the boss is here. It's time for us to visit with the athletic director at TPS. His name is Mick Wilson. Mick, thank you very much. Thanks, first of all, for inviting me to do this. Now, no one will ever fill the shoes of Gil Cloud and J.B. Haney, but I appreciate that, and thank you for taking the time to come over today. You bet. Well, Rick, we thank you for uh, coming back and helping us. Uh, it's been uh, a great need. And like you said, you're following maybe in either the, the steps of some famous or infamous, however you want to uh, look at it, but those guys, we miss them. Uh, obviously, JV's gone on, but uh, leaves quite a legacy within the district and throughout yes. the state, really. And then, of course, Gil's not far behind him, and uh, Gil's had some health struggles, but we want to wish him well and continue to get better. And uh, I've learned a lot from both those gentlemen, and uh, as I'm sure so many people in, in the Tulsa area have. So, uh, again, thank you for being here, and also, I, as I always rib you about being a hell alum so we appreciate uh, your give back on some of this rick i am a tps guy just like gill uh, gill was all right so here we are into football season and when you and i would visit on the radio we'd always talk about kind of the early start and what you guys have to get into and one of the things we get into is numbers how are numbers numbers are solid uh, across the board we're still uh, looking for some of the schools to uh, get kids involved that maybe are on the sideline due to either due to injuries due to eligibility issues as far as trying to figure out uh, if they've transferred if they've moved some yeah. things like that. And of course, then you always have some kids that are uh, lacking on physicals or uh, consent forms, mm -hmm. paperwork, things like that. Uh, for the most part, that should be taken care of. But again, you have those kids that uh, really don't think of back to school until the sec first or second week of school, and they come right. walking back in the hallways and uh, become a part of a, a particular team. So uh, other than that, I think we're, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, excited to see uh, some new coaches in some new places and uh, looking forward to the new challenge. But we've got some good people, as you've, as you've seen today on the show, that uh, are going to be a part of uh, helping us uh, refocus and, and realign our football programs. Yeah, you had to be really happy to bring it back, Antoine, and people like, uh, you know, you got a guy like Dan Bitson, you got to be really thrilled with that. Guys that are, are named guys, guys that do a great job, guys that are well-respected in the profession, and guys that attract kids and help us build our numbers. Yes. And those guys uh, obviously know how to run, run class programs, how to uh, build programs and how to attract kids. And so uh, that's the name of the game right now is just being able to, as you said, uh, with your first question is be able to build those numbers so that you can have uh, a viable program and have kids participating at a high level. And you mentioned coaches, and I was going to ask about that because I know that had been a thing too, is trying to make sure that you not only got coaches, but you maintained some coaches and you had a little bit of consistency. Is that coming along? That is coming along. Again, uh, part of that uh, due to uh, our commitment by Dr. Johnson, uh, by our new uh, deputy superintendent, uh, Dr. Kathy Dodd, uh, being able to for us to uh, raise those stipends. Mm -hmm. uh, hats off to our TCTA that uh, helped negotiate those and bring things to the table. So it's a back and forth process, but uh, our coaches are appreciative of that. Our salaries and our, our uh, stipends are very competitive throughout the state. And uh, again, uh, just trying to retain quality people. 
uh, beyond the, the coaching, we want to retain good coaches, but just be able to retain quality people that you want to uh, speak into your kids and, and help kids grow and become uh, productive adults. It's always the uh, ultimate goal. Yeah, when you're starting school means starting all those seasons, but it also means you already have to start preparation for other things. What's the busiest thing on your plate right now? Probably right now is just uh, helping our district uh, maintain and, and comprehend and um, work through these new rules with OSSA. Uh, so many things have changed now and also with uh, the State Department of Education on communicating with students sure. on uh, transfers on all those things is just making sure that we're we're in a good spot to be able to uh, give good advice to be able to pick up the phone and call when uh, we don't understand situations because there's never a perfect situation Rick that we always need help so that's probably number one and, and again just making sure that uh, a lot of the little things are covered transportation yes. uh, paperwork uh, scheduling and things like that, meals, being able to lean in and, and help uh, our schools get the attention that they need, uh, not only at one high school, but uh, nine high schools, and then also uh, you're talking about 10 middle schools. So uh, it's quite a, quite a lift, but uh, we've got a great group of folks that help, and our athletic directors throughout the district are really good about uh, helping as well. And you've been through now in all city, and you've been through some games already. Has everything been smooth? It has been smooth. I think uh, one thing that we lean in uh, heavily is safety. Uh, again, uh, you know, ironically, with the, the issues we've had here and it, even in Oklahoma City and throughout the state, it, it's not been isolated cases, but uh, just like Booker, uh, Booker T at home this week against Dell City. And of course, Dell City, there was no secret what happened there last year. So we want, we want our opposing teams to feel safe when they attend our events. We want our teams when they attend uh, other venues to feel safe. We want our patrons to feel safe. We want our coaches and kids and parents to feel safe and to feel welcomed. And so uh, that's priority number one. We, uh, we have meetings throughout the week. We begin the week with safety meetings and we end the week with safety meetings in preparation for all of our venues so that our folks are taken care of when they arrive. Yeah, how do you pick which games you go to on a Friday night? And, and, and well, any, any time during the week, because it's not just football. Usually we, uh, our staff meets at the beginning of the week. We meet on Mondays and I always pick last. I, let, I want our folks to be happy and feel, feel that they uh, want to go to a game that uh, they want to attend after hours off the clock, so to speak. And uh, so we just do as a staff, we kind of divide up and, and uh, pick and choose where we go and divide and conquer, so to speak. So um, I usually go last, like I said, but uh, try to land somewhere where, and, and Rick, I've been known to go first half at a venue and second half at another venue. Sure. So I've done that some and may happen this week, in fact. So I uh, just try to get out and about and, and let those people know that we support them and, and want to be a friendly face when they need one. So pay attention. The boss might be there. All right, Mick, thank you very much. Thanks, Rick. We I, appreciate you. You betcha. Thanks for being here. Mick Wilson, AD at Tulsa Public Schools here at Inside Tulsa Athletics. Hey, Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is facing off against a tough competitor, Plastic. Don't trust those numbers on the bottom. You have to stick to what you know. Only bottles and jugs found in the kitchen, bath, or laundry. They're quick to pick up and empty those bottles before sinking that shot. Always empty your bottles before recycling. Score big by recycling your plastic bottles and jugs. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Being an athlete at Edison High School has taught me to work as a team rather than as an individual. Whenever you're on a team, you have a special bond with each other. You know you can rely on them in a time of need, whether on or off the court. Whether it be a shoulder to cry on or advice on how you can improve, you know your team will always be there for you. Which one of these items can be recycled in the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart? air filter, cardboard box, toy car. The correct answer is cardboard box. Paper and cardboard are perfect for the city of Tulsa's blue recycling cart, but air filters and toys should be thrown away in the gray trash cart. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Back again on Inside Tulsa Athletics. I am Rick Corey, and now we are at Webster High School. Just a little inside here, if you will. We draw back the curtain to tell you that's where we record. This guy didn't have to come very far. Right down the hallway is Everett Davis. He's the head football coach at Webster. It's a good-looking shirt you got on there. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, when we talked on the radio, because you and I had a chance to visit back when I was still doing a radio show, you were just kind of new into this job, kind of figuring it all out. How's it going? 
I think it's going pretty good. I'm loving it. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be nowhere else. <laughs> Let's talk about being a high school football coach. It's something that I think a lot of people, if you ever played the sport, you'd think, well, I'd like to do that. When you get into it, though, there got to be a lot of surprises. When you got into this job, what are some of the things that kind of surprised you? What are some of the things you expected? Um, well, so when I first started, it was middle school. So it was a little, it, it, that wasn't as difficult. But when I got to high school, I thought maybe, hey, it's some older guys, older older kids. It should be a little better. Right. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's still the same. But, uh, man, um, it's for me, though, so some of my guys haven't played football. So it's just a little different than a traditional high school or any other coach. Uh, me, I mean, I'm still starting from, like, day one like we still just learning and I, I didn't think when i would be a high school coach i'll be teaching fundamentals i get in the stance mm, like kind of yeah, yeah but i still teach that um, so that that was one thing i didn't think i was really gonna have to, like teach somebody how to stand up right or position like I mean, we in high school juniors seniors but no i mean obviously we got guys that ain't even played a lick of football since they was what sixth grade seventh grade here and they ain't played in a while so yeah man we just uh, we just learning. We that's, all learn. That's a challenge. But, you know, I think at the same time, I can see a part of that that would be a little bit joyful. Man, you are getting an unfinished product and you get to start it from scratch. Yeah. And then what people don't know is, so this is my third year. And the guys that I have on the team now are all uh, freshmen and sophomores. I got them two years ago when they was seventh and eighth graders. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, they know what I already want and what I expect. So, I mean transferring over to high school now yeah. it wasn't as bad but like i said my juniors and seniors that i got man they haven't played football if you went to webster you ain't played football in like three or four years sure. so that's got to be fun though too i mean you put your stamp on something from the very beginning and that's got to be i maybe there's something to that that's a little bit like oh you know gosh i got to make sure i, I have to do this right but you got to be proud too no nah, yeah i am man and i graduated from here so it's just like eh. I'm just like walking the hall. I, I feel like I'm back in high school. <laughs> it, I all feel like it's back, like I'm just back in high school. Well, that's that's got to be a joy for you. All right, so where is this football team right now? You said you've got guys who, you know, have been with you. You've got guys who haven't, and they're trying to learn too. Where do you think you guys stand right now? I mean, I think we stand like right there in the middle. I don't think we too far off from people, but I don't think people too far off from us. So I think we like right there. I think we still got a good chance. I mean, we took a tough loss. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't had a, I, I don't know, I didn't know. I was thinking one day, I'm like, hey, I know I'm gonna have tough losses. I know I'm gonna have losses. It was on me, it was on me. Uh, I got losses when it was on the players. I got losses when it was maybe on the refs. <laughs> this one that we had, that was just a tough loss. It was just tough. So I finally got the feel of that. That one was tough, but other than that, I mean, cause I think we still should have won that game. And we just played uh, Tulsa Hill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good program. Yeah, I, I, the coach. I'm. I'm proud of. I'm happy for him. But that was just. That was, that was a tough one. That was a tough one. But I think we're going in the right direction, though. How do you take that to the locker room? And tell those guys, hey, look, I'm proud of you, but here's what we need to go on and do next. Hey, I, so when I go in there, I tell them, hey, definitely, I'm proud of you. But um, man, we just got to keep fighting. You can't let this stop you. And then another thing is, hey, man, we a two A school. We playing a five A school, four A school coming up next, another three. When we get to our district, we should be in real good shape, and that's what I keep trying to let them know. Like, hey, don't beat, don't beat yourself up. If I'm not beating myself up, you sure should beat yourself up. We'd be all right. We all right. <laughs> that's a great message for a bunch of young men. Yeah. Everett, thank you very much for jo for joining us and coming over. I got to tell you, Everett was really, really nervous, but you did just you, you just did really well, man. You did, and I got to tell you, that is a really good looking shirt. Well, thank you. I love it, so I might get you one. I, I you know what? I promise, <laughs> I'll wear it, and we'll have this guy back. I promise you. Thanks for joining us for this first edition of Inside Tulsa Athletics. Again, I'm Rick Corey, and I want to say once again, thanks to Gil Cloud, JB Haney, the guys who set the table for us here on this wonderful program, and we'll see you back next week right here on Inside Tulsa Athletics.